Hey guys, welcome to the Game Touch Controller update uh, for 9.83. Uh, the main feature integrated into this update was the ability to uh, integrate Game Touch into Twitch um, and allow your users to send commands uh, for the cost of bits, etc. The other one of the other big changes was the way that the VJoy works uh, in the back end. Uh, the calibration is now completely different, and some of the axes have changed for the SCM slider, etc. Um, so the first thing that you want to do if you've been previously using VJoy is to remove the old calibration. Um, if you haven't done a calibration with GameTouch in the past, then there's no need to do that. Um, but if you have, then you need to remove the existing calibration um, and put the new one in. There's two ways to do that. Uh, the first way is to just rerun the calibration again. It's, it's built in a way now that it's essentially going to uh, remove it. Or the other way, um, the more complete way is to, if you go into the patch notes, you'll see a couple of uh, locations in the registry where the calibrations exist. Uh, if you open up regedit in Windows, if just by going to the Windows search and typing R-E-G-E-D-I-T, regedit, and hit enter, it'll bring up this window, which is the uh, registry editor. Uh, go to the location that's described in the patch notes, uh, up the top here, and then you'll get these direct input and joystick OEM um, folders that are in here. You can see which entry belongs to VJoy just by going through the ones in the OEM section. You see this 83F is my verbal left, the 4390 is my verbal right, don't know what that one is, and bead is the VJoy. And then all we have to do is just delete this entry and then delete the corresponding um, bead entry up in the direct input. And then restart your computer and that'll be recalibrated. The reason this was done is so when people using Joystick Gremlin uh, having multiple VJoy devices being bound to the same VJoy output device, those now have the, the same calibration. Um, and also for future installs, the VJoy calibration won't be required. And the other change for moving the axes around from their default was because the SCM or speed limiter slider on the flight panel by default doesn't sit exactly at zero. And so if people uh, installed it and didn't remove that from where Star Citizen puts it as the default of roll axis, then their ship would just automatically be rolling as soon as they started. So that's been moved to a slider now, which Star Citizen doesn't bind by default. So even if people forget to remove those entries, uh, it shouldn't affect them in the gameplay uh, in the first instance. The chat window, all uh, sorry, the patch notes window, now you can scroll easily by just dragging the text on your mobile device. Uh, there's quite a bit to, to read through in there, so um, you know, have a read if you haven't seen this video where you need to uh, you know, review what we talked about. The layout itself has changed, as you can see. Um, we've got rid of the, all the yellow boxes and they're now more physicalized buttons. The check boxes have been changed to these uh, big white ones that are easy to see uh, you know, with green ticks when you check them. Uh, and there's a new section here for focus demands to application so that when you send commands to the, uh, the game touch server from your client or from the Twitch console or the Twitch chat, then they'll, it will try to send them to the Star Citizen window if it's available. Uh, when you try and click it without an entry in there, it won't let you. But if you type in there, for example, Star Citizen, case sensitive, and tick that, that will now, whenever the server gets commands, will try and send them directly to the Star Citizen game. All right, that's the kind of VJoy stuff uh, covered off on for the most part, uh, what we'll go for now is like how to set up your Twitch to connect with uh, Game Touch uh, and do that interactions. So on the very first screen, you'll see down here, Twitch Connect is off, um, and then next to that, there's a little gear icon. So if you click that, it'll open the uh, configuration window here for where you need to set up your application uh, information from the Twitch console. To get this client ID and client secret, the first thing we need to do is create the Twitch app. There's a shortcut button here, Twitch console, that will bring up the window for um, for Twitch. We'll just bring that to the forefront there. All right. So in this window, we can put a name in here. So in this case, we'll just put Game Touch. It doesn't really matter. He's felt it's just a name. 
the OAuth redirect URL is HTTP colon forward slash forward slash localhost colon 17563. So that's it there. Uh, and then we need to add that. The category, we select application integration. Confidential is the correct box here. And then, yep, not a robot and hit create. That's going to take you back to this window where we need to hit manage, which brings us back here. Um, Twitch has recently updated this. So what you want to do is hit add again, just to make sure that it has a remove box next to it. Then I'm not a robot and I'm going to go ahead and delete these afterwards. So I don't, I'm not, I don't really care that these client IDs are visible to everyone. And we copy the client ID and we paste that back into the game touch server under client ID. And we go back in and we create a new secret. Hit OK. And we copy that. And then go and paste that into the client secret box. And hit save details. And then go back out. Now when we can turn Twitch Connect on, it'll ask us to restart the server. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll just close it out and reload it. And we'll get prompted with a uh, window here to now authorize our application. And it will say, thanks for authenticating with the Pi Twitch API. If it comes up here with like could not reach um, the address or something like that isn't this or that previous page, go back in here um, and make sure that this has been added when you save it. Uh, you're free to just close out of this window then. So now that we've added those, we need to configure our Twitch information. The server itself doesn't have to be on to um, use just the Twitch portion. Um, so we can leave that off for now. And we just hit next. Uh, and when we're on this window, which is normally the window that you go to when you connect, uh, we can open the Twitch chat. And then here is where you'll see the messages, etc., that will come in through the Twitch channels. To configure this, down the bottom left here, you're next to the chat off, you'll see like a little, another little cog. We click that and we can get into the, the config window for the Twitch chat. This is where you can have up on the left here, you'll see all these commands, you can scroll down through it. Um, you can have up to 50 commands. If you don't have a mouse wheel that scrolls easily, you can also drag the side here like this and move it. And then right down the bottom, you'll see two commands that are built in, which is SCM0100 uh, and also miss. Uh, and while we're here, we'll just go ahead and set those to zero cost each with a cooldown of zero uh, and save those. Now, over on the right is the first thing you want to set up. And these are the channels that you want to monitor plus your own. And these are case, case sensitive. So, for example, for me, it's wormy underscore GTC. Uh, and that will start monitoring my channel. And then these are three other channels that we can put in here. So let's say we want Mr. King Chaos's channel. Uh, we want, let's see who's live right now. We can pick someone who has a lot of viewers. Doesn't really matter. It's just to get the chat. Let's just use Blasphemous. I'm going to leave him in there as well. And we can leave the third one blank. Uh, now we can hit save config and we can go back and it will tell us that we've made some changes to our channels uh, and then please restart the chat to apply. We hadn't had the chat on, so we don't need to, but we can just turn it on now. Uh, and now any chat messages that appear in either of those two channels will come up here. Uh, and then anything that hits your notifications, which we'll talk about in a second, will come up here. So we just bring it up, can chest my channel. And we see we got the message in here. 
And if we go to Bustamus's channel. Bell. Bell. And we'll do that. Uh, and we can see that people typing in Blasmus's channels, we are getting those notifications as well. And if we go back into the configuration, you'll see this notification list down here. Here you can put any number of words and or phrases separated by a return for things that you want to be notified of. So for example, we can just delete all this. Uh, you can leave it blank if you don't want any notifications. But if I, uh, let's put wormy in there. Let's put worm, different different case sensitive. Uh, and let's put game touch. etc. So anytime any of these words or let's put uh, has spent some bits. Anytime any of these words or this phrase appears in any of the chat channels that I'm monitoring, I will get a notification and it will be highlighted in yellow. So we'll just save that, go back. I'll just try it in there and see if uh, see if someone does it. All right now these these messages get saved into your folder and they create a log for every single day. So every single day, when the new day rolls over, a new file will be created and it'll keep a log of all of the chat that goes into your all channels as well as the individual specific messages that uh, that you get sent. So now that we know that the Twitch chat's working and we're monitoring the channels, we want to set up the commands so that people can, um, you know, spend bits to do certain commands for us in game. So if we go back into the configuration here, and let's make a new command called test. You don't need to put the exclamation in front of it. You just put the word in here. Oh, and we just got a notification, so we can go back and quickly check that. Um, and Frognuts has just sent a test message with a emoji. Uh, and so you'll see they'll get highlighted here in green and also up in your My Messages separately so that you can keep track of them without it getting cluttered into all of the chat. All right, so we're sending a command test. Uh, let's make it cost, say, one bit. Uh, and the response starts with two, so someone spent this many bits to do a thing, so we'll just say test gtc commands, and then we need to set what the actual command we want to be is, so we push the command button, what the cooldown we want is, so let's give it a cooldown of uh, five seconds, so this means that it doesn't matter who tries to do it, it'll only allow that command to trigger once every five seconds, and then let's give it the letter T as the key, um, so that we know when it types into chat T, we know that, that that's working. And we'll save that. Now let's make another one. We'll say test, test joy. And we'll make that one bit as well. And the response is to test vjoy command. And then when we join the command, we'll give that a cooldown of just, uh, we'll make it zero. And the key this time is going to be Joy 100, which is our VJoy button 100. And so they can be anywhere from Joy 1 to Joy 128. Don't use Joy 127 or 8. They're hard bound to zoom in and out. Um, and Joy 6 and 8 are bound to the um, push to talk by default. But any of the other, you know, 120. 24 buttons are uh, you know you can use freely or you can just unbind those push to talks anyway so let's save that no worries and the next thing we can set up is this high cost command blocking so let's say someone you set a, a really high cost command like self-destruct or something like that um and you set that at 200 bits for example if someone spends like that couple of dollars you don't want 
their command to get interrupted by someone else, for example, turning the ship off or doing some other thing that's going to prevent their command from actually executing. So you can put a, a value in here. So let's put the value here at uh, 10 and we're going to put the cooldown at, um, at 20 seconds. So if anyone does a command that's bit cost is over 10, no other commands will trigger for 20 seconds regardless of the cooldown you set here individually. So let's save that uh, and we'll go back here. And as you can see, the, the chat's rolling along. Now let's bring up our Twitch chat. Go back to my channel because it will only process commands inside your own channel. And now if I type in exclamation test, nothing should happen. And the reason nothing should happen is Back on our server screen, we didn't check commands to be on down here. So we'll turn commands on, and now when we bring up the Twitch chat, if we type in test, it went straight to the Star Citizen window because I have focus checked to go to Star Citizen. So let's uh, Let's uncluster that really quickly and turn that off. Now if I do it, it should type it in the chat here. And you can see that now down here, it's typed the T, which was the command that we set. Now you'll see in the chat, it says, um, I have spent one bits to test GTC commands. My bit bank balance is now three. So what that means is whenever you um, add, like spend bits by cheering in the channel, those get put into the bit bank and then people can spend those however they want. Um, so let's say someone cheers 100, they will then have 100 bits in the bit bank and they can check at any time just by typing exclamation bit bank to show you how many commands, how many bits they have. And you can check which commands that you have active by exclamation GTC, CMD for command list. And it will print out which commands and what they are and their costs. So the other one we set up was the test joy to test our joystick inputs. So what we'll do is we'll bring up the, uh, the joystick gremlin win window in front of it here. Uh, let's put this switch window behind that. Okay. Now if we type in test joy, we should see joy button 100 get triggered in our little inputs there. And you can see that that flash there, so it pushed button 100. I suggest where possible using the uh, the VJoy buttons as inputs because they will go to the Star Citizen window um, by default without even having the focus application checked, uh, and also prevent you know like typing in a random window if you're alt tabbed. Um, what we'll do now is we'll go in and we'll just uh, set one of those commands to be a high cost command, so over 10 bits. All right, let's create a new one. Let's just call it high cost for the purposes of this. Let's make it 11 bits, um, so it's over our 10 bit threshold. Uh, and then let's call it test a high cost command. Uh, we'll make it another joy button. Let's give it, actually let's make it, uh, let's make it a letter so we can see it easily. Let's make it X. Uh, and the cooldown, let's just make it, uh, I don't know, eight, doesn't really matter it's going to trigger this cooldown anyway. Uh, so 
We'll save that. And go back. Now we only have two bits left in the bank and this was set at a cost of uh, 11. So if we try and do this command now, let's first make sure it's in there, GCC command list. Yep, high cost. So let's do high cost. It tells me that this costs 11 bits and I only have two bits in the bank. Okay, well I need to cheer now to give myself some more bits in order to be able to spend them on commands. But um, what if you know a user's done something and you know his bits are gone, but they really shouldn't be, etc. So we can go in here and we can grant bits. So I'm going to grant myself. This is not case sensitive. I'm just going to grant myself uh, a thousand bits, uh, and that will go into my bit bank. Now they're not actual Twitch bits, like with the cost, right? That's just as if I did spend that money. That's what it would be. So I've now granted myself those bits. I can bring back up the window here and I can check my big bank again. And now I have a thousand two bits. So now we will check our high cost. And I did that uh, high cost command, which typed X, which was the command I gave it. Now if I try and do another one, like test, It'll tell me that high cost commands are in effect and they're on hold for another 11 seconds. And it won't let me do that until that high cost command cooldown is done. Now we gave test itself a cooldown of five seconds. So if I do it twice really quickly, oops, um, it'll tell me that, sorry, it's got a five second cooldown. So the other two commands um, that are hard bound by default are the SCM and the uh, miss buttons. If you haven't got those bound, uh, the easiest way to do that is go into your options. Uh, they require the VJoy to be installed. Uh, and then you go into key bindings, joystick hotas, advanced controls, customization, uh, till you get to where you do bindings. Then go to flight movement to bind the SCM or speed limiter slider. Scroll down to where you see uh, speed limiter absolute. And then on the flight panel, double click that and when it says waiting for input, just move that slider up and down and it will bind to uh, the speed limiter absolute. The other um, is to go to on foot all, which is where are we here? And we need to bind the look left and, uh, sorry, the look your and look pitch. If we bring up the cinematics panel, set it to real time enjoy down here. And then when it says look your, when it says waiting for input after we've double clicked, we just move it to the left till it rebinds X. Hit yes, reset, and then do the same for Y but with up and down. Yes. Reset, uh, and now we have those bound. Now if we were to, for example, have our little pistol out here, uh, and someone was to put exclamation mark miss into the chat, it will pick a random direction for one second to move your look in. Sometimes it might be a big one like that one. Let's do it again, see if we can get a, a different one. See that one wasn't so drastic. And then the other one, we'll just get into the seat, which is our SCM. So with our ships on, if someone was to type SCM and then a value between 0 and 100, so let's do SCM 80, and we watch our little SCM slider there.
you'll see that the SCM moves. Now the percentages aren't exact, around 15% is about what uh, reset is because the speed limiter is logarithmic. But you can mess around and see what values are what. This will be uh, SCM 15 and it moves about to reset and so let's do SCM 5. And that's how these work. The last, uh, another thing that changed uh, while we're here is on the on the comms panel. I changed the default message uh, to check out Game Touch Controller for Star Citizen at the website. So if you've got the chat up uh, and you hit that, uh, it'll type that in there. Uh, you know, if you want to, I suppose, get the message out. Um, your display infos are still there as they were before. So turn them on and off. And that is essentially how to set up your commands. The other thing you have here is lurk. So let's say uh, you lurk in chat, you can turn lurk on if you wish. And then now if anyone sends you a message, it will send an automated reply in any of these channels that you get. Anything that triggers your notifications um, or an at you, they'll get a notification to say, hey, sorry, I'm, um, I'm not around at the moment. I'll be back, etc." I don't think I, I don't think you can trigger it yourself. Let's have a quick look. Yep, okay, so you can. So that's what it will come up there. Someone ats me in the chat, it will come back with uh, an automated reply. I just stepped out, lurking, check back and message when I get back. It won't go into, messages that you send won't go into your my messages though. turn that off and so that is effectively how to do the twitch integration we'll turn uh, for focus commands back on for now and we'll start our server so one thing I forgot to mention uh, when recording the video so just do an edit is that uh, once you have your twitch configuration set up if you open the game touch save folder in here is where your Twitch configuration settings and logs for the channels are kept. As you can see, I've got the two logs there. I've got the Twitch chat config, the commands, um, the, the Twitch details, which is an encrypted file for your client information. And then you'll also have the BitBank here. So if you go and you do different streaming on another computer, take those with you and drop them into the the same folder on your other computer and then that'll already be set up you won't need to redo the configuration again um, and that's kind of how that's kind of how that works if you open the bitbank you can see like a list in here of any users um, that have bits and you can manually edit those if you want uh, instead of using the grant bits but this is where it keeps the record of who spent bits in your channel so that they have those in the bitbank Okay. You can see the, the turret client now um, has been a little bit cleaned up and it's got the server 2 IP address and the server 2 port. Uh, so if I, for example, this would be my laptop that I have set up. If I go and turn this on, turn the server on. You can see it's now waiting, uh, and I've got it set up to, this is its IP address, this is the port, it's still the same port, uh, and now if I go ahead and start this, you'll see on my laptop that it will connect, and then whenever I do my um, joystick commands, you'll see those commands pop up in the in the messages to so that you know that it's working. And I'll just go ahead and stop that, stop it running, and it will disconnect.
All right, cool. we'll just quickly go over the next thing, which was the changes um, to the salvage panel. Uh, best effort, I mean, you, you obviously you can feel free to change them to you know, anything that you want. Um, and so we'll bring up our little in-game here now. Uh, and I will connect my tablet. Turn to game. So, just turn off head tracking. So the salvage panel uh, has been updated to hopefully accommodate uh, as best I could for the new changes. Uh, we've got our engage left arm here, which will turn on the left arm and also um, like focus it, and the engage right arm will turn on the right arm and focus it. That's a toggle to turn it on and off. And then down the bottom you've got control both arms if you want to control both or just control if you don't want to do the actual turning on as well. The gimbal mode changes from your gimbal to flying the ship. I'll put that gimbal mode back on. You've got your um, distance between your beams down the bottom that's bound to a VJoy axis in the settings. You can reset that. Then up the top, you've got our toggle fracture, toggle disassemble. Uh, and then you've got a quick access to turn on and off salvage mode up the top and also back to the flight panel um, to change back to the flight panel. Flight panel, the mining mode's now been changed to salvage mode. You can change it back if you like just by doing the configure. Um, so that will go and push M as well as go to salvage mode. The next thing that got changed is um, up on the top you'll see the clock. The back button now has a clock attached. If you didn't know you can add a clock to any of the buttons just by typing clock in the button. Um, so we can go back and back with that. So the cinematics panel got a change um, as well, we got an update um, and you can see here I've got a bunch of cameras with pannings set up and I've got the door open there. And so previously, um, the only option that you had for doing automatic camera is down the bottom right here. You can change. You could change it to random or off. Now you have random, no repeat, linear, and off. So if you put it to random, it will do the same as before. Pick a random camera, um, and then just go through the panning for that camera, and then pick another random camera. And this happens every 15 seconds. It'll pick another camera, uh, and then rotate through. The next one is no repeat, which will randomly go through anything that you have active. So you can see I have pan one, two, three, four, and um, five is set to continuous there. So those five cameras, it will randomly go through, but it won't repeat the two cameras uh, until it finishes the, the list of ones you have available. Then it will re-randomize that list and go through it again, but not repeat. And then the next one so that you can make like a, I suppose an extended cinematic is linear, which will just go through them from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'll create a, a new pan really quick. Um, let's just make it pan six. We'll attach it to camera six. Doesn't seem like I have a camera set up for six yet. I'll change it to joy, leave it in real time. Let's uh, rotate it around the front of the ship, a bit more sensitivity. Let's call it there, drop that sensitivity down a little bit. Happy with that. Let's uh, dolly in and out. We'll go dolly out a little bit. Let's go there. Okay, let's call that our camera six. So to save it, push and hold camera six. 
until it flashes green. Now that camera angle is saved, so if we hit reset to go back, hit camera 6, that's where our camera is. Now to create a panning, let's create a real simple one. Let's give it a bit of a uh, little bit of rotation that way. Um, we'll track the camera to the left to follow that a little bit as well. And we'll save, confirm. Uh, and then let's also give it some dolly out. Uh, let's go a bit faster. Let's go with that. Confirm. All right, reset. Now we've set pan six. Let's just attach it to camera six. And now if we push that, that's our panning that we just made. And it will be now added to the list if we go through and do our random no repeat linear or well those. The other thing is now if I set uh, set any of these options on any of the other screens on the shortcut, it'll also turn them on and off here. So if I put that on no repeat. Random, um, we'll go back in the cinematics panel, random will be on there too, in the Torah panel. So anywhere we go to, it'll be on. Okay. And they're essentially the, oh, this one other, the other thing. So when you used to have to come back to the main screen uh, to save your profiles by pushing and holding the profile button like this, you don't need to do that anymore. Anytime you make a change, it will automatically save it by default. So if I was to go into, for example, um, custom and add a new button, as soon as I save it, uh, it will automatically update that profile. Same for the other screens. If I went and I changed um, this button to something else, let's take the alt off just for the purposes of this, close, that will now be saved. Uh, and you don't need to go and hold that profile button. So the axes got changed, so this one is now a slider axis and not Z like it used to be. Uh, and then one of the things that you can do if you have joysticks, um, most of the time you won't bind this one, but one other thing I found to be useful is to change it to the, it's hard to see there, I'll move back a bit, change the convergence distance on your lasers. Um, so there's a access now for that so as I fire you can see that it changes the convergent distance on the lasers Alright guys, well that's that's pretty much it, um, thanks for tuning in, sorry it was, uh, it was a bit long, I'm still working on getting these videos uh, to be a bit better, but if you have uh, any questions, hit me up on the Discord.